Hi, welcome back to my channel. My name is Allie. Just a couple months ago, I did a book haul and I'm already back. I had a troubling February, so I used that opportunity to buy a lot of books, okay? I am a little embarrassed. I'm usually not embarrassed because it's like, it's my money. I pay my bills. This is what I choose to spend my money on. Like, what's the big deal? I feel a little weird about how many books I've accumulated in the past couple months. I think this is going to be the biggest book haul I have for a while because things in my life are changing. We're moving. We've got different jobs coming up. So until things get a little more solid in my life, I'm not going to be spending so much on books. Uh, that being said, I have two pre-orders on their way to me right now. So I have 40 books for you here today, 10 of which I have read. So 25% of these books have been devoured at one point or another. I'm going to quickly tell you my ratings of these and then get into the descriptions of all the rest alphabetically. Let's go with the ones I've read. First of all, Annie Bot, which is a five star. This is a sci-fi slash fiction novel about a robot named Annie who was created to be the girlfriend to this dude named Doug. Five stars. Then Beach Read by Emily Henry. I finally bought this actual copy. This has been years since I read this book. So technically I haven't read it since I bought it, but I bought it to reread at some point. I'm not taking it out of the 25% though. This is a romance slash fiction that if I can recall is not quite a beach read. It's kind of intense about enemies to lovers, but also grief story about our main character's dad dying. I'm pretty sure I gave this, uh, this was before I was even rating books really. I think I gave it somewhere between a three and a half and a four. I feel like I'd give it a higher rating now though. I don't know, I don't know. Bride by Allie Hazelwood. This is a paranormal romance between a vampire and a werewolf. It's enemies to lovers, but more so it's an arranged marriage. There's also a mystery in here. I give it three stars. Burn the Negative by Josh Winning. This is a horror. Yeah, it's a horror. I don't know why I'm using quotation marks. It takes place on the set of a horror movie and it follows the actress of a horror movie in the past and in the present. It's kind of hard one to summarize very quickly. I'm feeling pressure, but I do review this book in this wrap up as well as a bunch of these. Little Blue Encyclopedia for Vivian. This is a fiction novel about a TV show, a made up TV show, and also someone remembering their friend who has passed away. I give it five stars. Ready or Not, this is a romance less fiction takes place in New York City. It's all about an accidental pregnancy and it's nine months that our main character is pregnant. She also has a <coughs> romance with her best friend's brother. I gave it 3.75 stars. For some reason, I can't give it a four star. I don't know what's stopping me. The Thursday Murder Club by Richard Osman. This is a mystery of elderly folks who have come together in their retirement community to solve unsolved crimes and then a crime actually happens around them and they're trying to solve it. I gave it four stars. The Invisible Hotel. This is I. Uh, uh, this is a hard one to summarize quickly. I don't know why I'm like trying to do this fast pace. This takes place in Korea. It's about a young woman who lives in a small town where they wash bones of all their ancestors in their bathtubs in their houses. And she also dreams about this hotel. And there's a lot of discussion about North Korea. I give it three and a half. What Feast at Night by T. Kingfisher. This is the sequel to What Moves the Dead. It's a horror book. There's a tale about a creepy myth slash creature, question mark. And it follows a a lovely group of characters, including our main character named Alex. I gave it, what did I give this? I can't remember now. I think a three and a half. And then Wings Once Cursed and Bound, I gave this one stars. <clears throat> Check out my rant here if you're curious. I'm so done talking about this book. Why did I make that so stressful for myself? I was trying to be so quick. Okay, let's move on. Now, all of these books uh, have been purchased within the last few months, but I have forgotten some of the summaries since I've purchased them. Also, some of them I buy because they're a part of a book club or because someone recommended it so thoroughly that I was influenced to purchase it without really knowing too much about it. So don't judge me. I need to refresh my memory on the synopsis of most of these. First, we have Catherine House. This is by Elizabeth Thomas. It's a gothic infused debut of literary suspense set within a secluded elite university and following a dangerously curious rebellious undergraduate who uncovers a shocking secret about an exclusive circle of students dot 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 and the dark truth beneath her school's promise of prestige. So this college I think is set in a small town in Pennsylvania and they're kind of locked into this school. It says students must give Catherine, not Catherine House, I wonder if like is the headmistress named Catherine? The students must give 
Catherine three years completely removed from the outside world. Family, friends, television, music, even their clothing must be left behind. <gasps> Can you imagine? I'm just so curious as to what the hell's going on at the school. What is she gonna uncover? I hear this gets a little weird and I'm so ready for it. Okay, I went to Barnes & Noble a couple weeks ago and for some reason I was called to finally purchase Corrupt by Penelope Douglas. I've read a couple Penelope Douglases and wow were they messy and I don't even know if they were like a great piece of writing, but I had so much fun and they were a little wild. Oh my gosh, so much fun. Like the kind of fun where you're like, oh my God, and you can't look away, but like, you're kind of into it. I'm just gonna read this out because I'm, I'm like giggling already. Erica Fane knows her boyfriend's older brother is handsome, strong, and completely terrifying. What is it with this woman and brothers? A college basketball star gone pro, he's more concerned with the dirt on his shoe than he is with her. But she saw him, she heard him, the things that he did and the deeds that he hid. Hmm. For years, Rika bit her nails. Oh, I guess her nickname's Rika, or Rika? Erica, Erika, Eureka. I'm so hyped right now and I don't know why. For years she was unable to look away. Now she's in college, but she hasn't stopped watching him. He's bad. <laughs> And the things she's seen aren't content to stay in her head anymore because he's finally noticed her. Michael Christ knows the hold he has on Rika, how much she fears him. She looks down when he enters the room and stills when he's close. He knows she thinks only of him. When Michael's brother joins the military, leaving Rika alone and unprotected. From what? Michael knows the opportunity is too good to be true. Three years ago, she put Michael's friend in prison? What? Three years ago, she put Michael's friends in prison and now they're free. Every last one of her nightmares is about to come true. I did not see that coming. I am, I like, I kind of want to start reading this tonight. I don't know what it is about this woman's writing. It's just a train wreck that I can't look away from. And it's usually very smutty. I got Dead Things Are Closer Than They Appear by Robin Waisley. I talked a little bit about this in this video. And for some reason, it was calling to me despite being a paranormal YA from an author I've never read before. Like that's kind of a wild card for me to be like, oh, let me just purchase this book. But it's kind of giving Stranger Things a little bit it almost is sounding like it's going to take inspiration from other YA paranormals and maybe have some fun with it. I'm sort of just making that up. We follow our main character named Sid and she's supposed to be this average as fuck girl, which I love. I love to read an average girly. They live in this town that is magical, like weird stuff is happening and everyone kind of knows about it, but it's all trapped up in some sort of fault line in the earth. I really don't understand this. I'm gonna need to read it to fully picture it. My brain's a little slow like that. Anyway, there are people that guard this fault line to make sure nothing demonic comes out but one day it gets ripped open and the guards go missing or are killed and all sorts of shit starts coming out monsters crawl from the ground no one can enter or leave and the man behind it all is roaming the streets with a gang of violent vigilantes she finds out that her brother who i think is one of the guards he's gone missing so she has to investigate where he is and also probably how to fix the entire world sid and the ragtag crew of would-be heroes are the only thing standing between their town and the end of the world as they know it I don't know what it is, but this is just calling to me. I feel like this is gonna be so fun and cute and nostalgic. If any of you have read this, please let me know. This next one is a little random, seemingly, but if you know me, you're like, you knew I was gonna purchase this. This is the coffee table book, Euphoria Fashion by Heidi Bivens, who is the costume designer for the show Euphoria. I am obsessed with television costuming, especially for some reason, teen show costuming, Pretty Little Liars, Gossip Girl. The Bold Type, The Lion Game, like random little shows too, but this is like the best teen drama for costuming. My sentences aren't making sense, but you know what I meant. That we've had since the early 2010s. This was just an obscene amount of money to be purchased because I couldn't just purchase this from a store. I had to purchase it from A24 and um, it was a lot and I haven't read it yet and I, I cannot wait. I think this is just the perfect thing for me because I am one of those bitches who still go on Pinterest so that I can remember outfits like this for the rest of my life. And now I have it all right here on my coffee table. <gasps> Next is another book I got at Barnes and Noble the other day. And when I go to the physical bookstore, I, for some reason, like to pick books up that I've never heard of. Books that where the covers are just calling to me and I don't even read the synopses, which is the most chaotic thing ever, but what can I say, I'm a Gemini. One of those random ass books that I picked up is called Ghostly by Audrey, I don't like saying her last name. This is the author of The Time Traveler's Wife, so I know she's a good writer, but this is a collection of ghost stories. And there's a little cat on the cover.
cover. I have never heard of this book. Oh shit! I literally just noticed this is an anthology for a bunch of different authors, not just Audrey. It's introduced and illustrated by Audrey, and I think she has a story, but some of the other authors are Edgar Allan Poe, which I have a whole collection of his back here, Kelly Link, M.R. James, Neil Gaiman, H.H. Munro. Oh, okay, see, I'm a little less excited now. That's probably why you should read the back of the book. Um, but I also, I love short stories. I love ghosts. And let's see some of these illustrations. This one's called They by Rudyard Kipling. And here's a photo. Okay, eventually I'll get to this. Probably not soon though. What is wrong with me? Next, I got Kill For Me, Kill For You by Steve Cavanaugh. This was a peer pressure kind of thing. I saw so many people reading this and then I was at the bookstore and I was like, yeah, okay. Well, I mean, I might as well. This this is a book that I, I should have like gotten from the library. I don't know why I'm hating on this book. Like I bought it. I'm so sorry. I have heard pretty good things about it, which is probably why I picked it up. It takes place in New York City. Two strangers meet by chance. Over drinks, Amanda and Wendy realize they have much in common, especially loneliness and the intense desire for revenge against the men who destroyed their families. As they talk into the night, they come up with the perfect plan. If you kill for me, I'll kill for you. I do not understand this concept because if you're willing to kill and you're already pissed at someone, why don't you just kill that person yourself? Like. I don't understand. I don't understand it. Obviously, I need to read the book. In another part of the city, Ruth is home. Oh, alone when the beautiful brownstone she shares with her husband, Scott, is invaded. She's attacked by a man with piercing blue eyes who disappears into the night. Will Ruth ever be able to feel safe again while the blue-eyed stranger is still out there? These stories collide in this Hitchcockian, <laughs> sorry, and heart-racing psychological thriller. Okay, okay, okay. See, I like it when two things are in the synopses and it says that the stories collide because you're like, how are these connected? <gasps> okay, I'm, I'm actually glad I got this. I've heard some pretty good things about it. Maybe I'll get to it relatively soon. Speaking of like thrillers, I did get this one, Look Closer by David Ellis, simply because Kayla with Books and Lala, hi buddy, if you're out there, she said in a video at some point recently that this is a good comp title for Gone Girl. I love Gone Girl, specifically the way that it was written. I love Gillian Flynn's writing, and I'm pretty sure Kayla does too, so I had to get this. I had to get it. It's a little meatier than I thought it was gonna be. Simon and Vicky couldn't seem more normal, a wealthy Chicago couple with a stable if unexciting marriage. But with these two, dot dot dot, absolutely nothing is what it seems. Ooh. When a beautiful socialite is found hanging in a mansion in a nearby suburb, Simon and Vicky's complex web of secrets begins to unravel. A whirlwind affair, a $20 million trust fund about to come due, a decades long grudge, and an obsession with revenge. Both Vicky and Simon are liars, but just who exactly is conning who? Oh, okay, I get the connection there now. Prepare to question everything you think you know in this wickedly clever novel of greed, revenge, obsession, and quite possibly the perfect murder. This is the kind of book where I have like not low expectations, not high expectations. I'm just kind of curious. And those are the most fun because you can't ever get let down. You know what I mean? This next book, however, is a five-star prediction and there's a lot riding on it. It's called Martyr by Keva Akbar. This is my first possibly sad boy book. I read a lot of sad girl lit fic. This is sad boy lit fic. I also accidentally bought the uh, large text copy and it just, it, uh, I hate it. But I do love a floppy ass cover. This is a debut novel and the people who have been five starring this, first of all, they're saying it's like their favorite book of the year. I trust them so explicitly. These are the same people that like, these are their two favorite books of the year. And this one is definitely going to be my favorite of the year. So it's like, I need to read this one if they like this one. This honestly seems so intense. I'm a little nervous about how sad this is gonna be. It's about a young man grappling with an inheritance of violence and loss. Cheery stuff. Cyrus, our main character, is a drunk, an addict, and a poet whose obsession with martyrs lead him to the mysteries of his past. Toward an uncle who rode through Iranian battlefields dressed as the angel of death to inspire and comfort the dying. That's interesting. I guess that's where this is coming from. And toward his mother through a painting discovered in a Brooklyn art gallery that suggests she might not have been who or what she seemed. <gasps> Cyrus is guided on his journey by the voices of artists, poets, and kings and delivered in the novel's unforgettable final pages. Oh God! 
to a world that teems with unforeseen wonders. It's a gut-wrenching anguish and exquisite consolation, a book that sees into every corner of the human heart. See, I feel like this is gonna be way too smart for me, so I am intimidated, and I'm so sure, based on everyone's reviews, that I am going to worship it. Ah, I just, I'm nervous about my little heart, okay? I had a book stacked on here that I've definitely owned for a while, so it might not be 40 books I'm hauling right now. If you're keeping count, just don't believe anything I say, okay? Next up is Memory Piece by Lisa Ko. This just came in the mail today. I can't be stopped. I got this because it is Bellatrice book club pick for April, and I do like their book club. This is the one that was, I think, founded by Emma Roberts and her BFF, which I think is fitting because this is a story about a lifelong friendship, and I think it's, ugh, I'm kind of scared. It's going over their adult life and seeing how that friendship kind of changes and hopefully solidifies this takes place in the 80s, the 2000s, the 2010s, and apparently goes into the future a little bit, into the 2040s. It's a story of three lifelong friends as they strive to build satisfying lives in a world that turns out to be radically different from the one they were promised. I wonder if there, there's going to be like some sci-fi elements in this? I know if they... <laughs> If they have a falling out, I'm going to lose it. They all have different sort of hobbies too and like focuses and passions. Giselle is a performance artist. Jackie is a coder. And then Ellen is a community activist. So there's a lot going on in there. I hope it's all done well and I hope it weaves together very flawlessly. Okay, next up. I know I'm going alphabetically and none of these books start with M, but this is the Mistborn Trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. Grant and I have been reading The Way of Kings. Oh, we've been reading it for two months. We're on page 150. We are reading it to each other out loud, which yes, is the cutest fucking thing you've ever heard. But we've decided we're having so much fun doing that that we have bought a couple more of Brandon Sanderson's work because it's something that we're both interested in. So Mistborn is going to be one of those. And I could only get this copy in a trio. So I just went ahead and got it. Grant actually has this in like a mass market paper book or mass market paper back. I don't know. They're both books. Whatever. He has them. Those mass market paperbacks, they are so ugly to me. They're disgusting. I hate them. They look annoying. Like even these are kind of like squat for me. They're bugging me. His copies are like this big. They're disgusting. I hate them. I really don't know shit about this series, but this guy I follow on Instagram, he is one of those people I really trust that have given Martyr like a five-star rave review that like I think he influenced me to pick Martyr up. Um, He also loved Beautyland, but he also fucking loved this series. So I'm intrigued. Okay, I have another one here that I hauled last time. I'm so sorry. This is like 38 books I'm hauling. Oh, this is getting embarrassing, but that means my percentage of red versus not red has gone up. Next up is Natural Beauty by Ling Ling Huang. I have heard pretty good things about this. I heard it's weird, but you know I'm excited for. I don't know why I haven't bought this earlier, but it is a book club pick for a book club I'm in. The discussion's coming up rather quickly, so I need to read this like ASAP. Natural Beauty follows a young musician into an elite beauty obsessed world where perfection comes at a staggering cost. Our narrator produces a sound from the piano no one else at the conservatory can. How is that possible? She employs a technique she learned from her parents, also talented musicians who fled from China in the wake of the Cultural Revolution. But when an accident leaves her parents debilitated, she abandons her future for a job at a high-end beauty and wellness shop in New York City. The store, Holistic, oh, get it, Holistic, okay, is known for its remarkable products and procedures, from remoras that suck out cheap Botox to eyelash extensions made of spider silk. And her new job, how have I never read this synopsis before? <laughs> and her new job affords her entry into a world of privilege and gives her a long-awaited sense of belonging. She becomes transfixed by Helen, the niece of Holistic's charismatic owner, and the two strike up a friendship that hazily veers into more. Wink, wink. All the while, our narrator is plied with products that slim her thighs, smooth her skin, and lighten her hair. But beneath these creams and tinctures, lies something sinister. I love the word tincture. <laughs> a piercing darkly funny debut, National Beauty, Natural Beauty, explores questions of consumerism, self-worth, race, and identity, and leaves readers with the shocking and unsettling truth. So it sounds like it's gonna be like a funnier rouge. Ooh, interesting. Speaking of book clubs, I got Night Watching by Tracy Sierra. This is the April pick for Books and Lala's Literally Dead Book Club. I have never read a book at the same time as a book club. I own like merch from the book 
book club. I have a sweatshirt and a shirt. Never read a book with them. Never seen a live show because I never read the book on time. I've either read it before or after. And this month, I wanna read a book with the book club. This is a thriller, so a little out of my comfort zone, which I think is going to be good because I'll be easily pleased. Like I'll be gagged by something that experienced thriller readers probably aren't just like whatever. Home alone with her young children during a blizzard, a mother tucks her son back into bed in the middle of the night. She hears a noise. Old houses are always making some kind of noise. Okay. But this sound is disturbingly familiar. It's the tread of footsteps, unusually heavy and slow, coming up the stairs. She sees the figure of a man appear down the hallway, shrouded in the shadows. Terrified, she quietly wakes her children and hustles them into the oldest part of the house, a tiny secret room concealed behind a wall. Why is that even there? There they hide as the man searches for them, trying to tempt the children out with promises and scare the mother into surrender. <gasps> In the suffocating darkness, the mother struggles to remain calm, to plan. Is this like a retelling of, what is that? Medea? Or what is it where like the mom? Is that some retelling? Did I just spoil the whole thing? I mean, it doesn't say that, but maybe it'll play around with that. I've never actually read that, the original or anything. I feel like I just ruined this book for everyone. I'm so sorry. But apparently she knows exactly who this person is. That makes me want to read it. I want to know more. Why can't she talk to them? Why can't she call the police? Like, what is happening? Next, we have Ocean's Echo by Everina Maxwell. This is the same author as Winter's Orbit, and I think it's in the same universe, but it's not a series. I think they're following two different people. I could be wrong though, but they looked great together. And honestly, I know this sounds really dumb, but I wanted I wanted the set, okay? I was scared that they were gonna stop selling this in hardback, and that's why I picked it up. How pathetic is that? Consumerism, consumerism. Tenelin Halkana can read minds. He's also a walking disaster, a rich socialite, and an inveterate flirt. Inveterate? Good word. Tennel, like all neuromodified readers, is a security threat on his own. But when controlled, readers are a rare asset. Not only can they read minds, but they can navigate chaotic space, the maelstrom surrounding the gateway to the wider universe. Oh my. Tennel is placed in the care of Lieutenant Surat Yeni, a duty-bound soldier, principled leader, and the son of a notorious traitor general. I'm hoping I'm not spoiling anything for book one. I'm gonna keep reading. Whereas Tennel can read minds, Surat can influence them. Interesting. Like all neuromodified architects, he can impose his will on others and he's under orders to control Tennel by merging their minds. Shut up. I've been saying for the longest time, I don't know if I've been saying it in my videos, I know I've said it at least once, that I love a shared consciousness and it's Stephanie Meyer's fault. It so is her fault and I need this. I need it. Surat accepted this suspicious promotion track request out of desperation, but he refuses to go through with his illegal orders to sink and control an unconsenting Tennel. So they lie. They fake a sink bond and plan Tennel's escape. I'm so sorry I'm blushing, but I want them to sink up. I want it. I want it. Tennel and Surat can no longer abandon their world. The only way to avoid life under full military control is to get together. I'm just kidding. Is to complete the very sink they've been faking. Yeah. Can two unwilling weapons of war bring about peace? I don't know, but it sure can bring about love. Next up, we have another queer romance. This is On the Same Page by Haley Cass. This is very much contemporary though. I'm pretty sure it's about these two friends who are roommates in college. One of them's a bitch, and I'm so excited for that character. I love a bitchy love interest. I think it's because, I don't know. I'm not gonna get all personal right now. Anyway, I'm so sure that this is them be being enemies to best friends, and I think it takes over the span of 10 years, and then they get together, finally. <gasps> That sounds like a nice slow burn and I'm so ready for it. It is a thick girly. This was on my TBR for I think February. I did not get to it, obviously. I wonder if this is sort of inspired by the sex lives of college girls. I love that show. And Renee Rapp is like a bitchy lesbian. Maybe, maybe I'm gonna be thinking about Renee Rapp while I read this. Okay, this next one is one of those that I bought completely based off the cover, just a vibe. It's called Pieces by Helen Oyayemi. I don't know. I don't know, this is just so calling to me. Also, it looks good with my shirt. When Otta and Xavier Shin declare their love and Aunt gives them a trip on a sleeper train to mark their new commitment, setting off with their pet mongoose. Also, there's so many mongoose, mongoose, mongooses? In Hawaii, it's one of the only like land creatures here. So that's kind of funny. Otto and Xavier quickly deduce that the lucky day is no ordinary locomotive. Their trip on this former tea smuggling train has been curated beyond their wildest imaginations, complete with mysterious and welcoming 
welcoming touches. They seem to be the only people on board, intrigue, until Otto discovers a secretive woman who issues a surprising message. As further clues and questions accrue, the trip upends everything they thought they knew. Otto and Xavier begin to see connections to their own past, connections that now bind them together. Pieces is about what it means to be seen by another person, whether it's your love or a stranger on a train. Oh my god. And what happens when things you thought were firmly in the past turn out to be right beside you? Like, how did I pick a five-star prediction without even reading the back? Vibes. I'm telling you, vibes work out sometimes. I did purchase Poor Things by Alistair Gray. I bought it before I watched the movie because I was like, oh, I'll read the book first. But then it didn't come in time, so I just watched the movie and I loved it. It's one of those pieces of fiction where there's so much to discuss and think about and so much problematic and weird shit happening that it's like, it's just it's very interesting. But also the movie was so visually stunning. Oh my fucking God. I just can't get enough of the visuals in here. And so I'm actually scared that this book isn't going to do it justice because so much of my pleasure of that movie came out of the visuals, the color, the color changes, the lens. I don't know, I don't know. I'm a little worried about this. Plus, oh, there's some like drawings and stuff in here. Interesting, interesting. This does seem to be the kind of pretentious book possible that goes over my little head, you know? I am definitely going to be reading at some point, but I think this is gonna be a book where I take my time because there is a lot to unpack here. And I think this is going to be a bit pretentious, but that's exactly what I want at the same time. Next is a book I just recently bought, even though I said I was gonna stop buying them. I am so excited for this. It's someone you can build a nest in. Look at this cover. This encapsulates how chaotic sounding this book is. This is like a horror fantasy romance. Romance. There's everything in here. I'm so sure it's gonna be everything I want. Our main character's name is Shi Shi Shen. She's a monster and she lives in this manor. These dudes come and try to kill her or something. So she takes on some sort of form by using like a bear trap. That's her mouth. She has like metal chains for a spine, all this different stuff. And she flees. I think she gets injured. And when she wakes up, this beautiful woman is taking care of her. And Shi Shi Shen is immediately like gagged. Shi Shi Shen is in love. She's a sim. She's ready to put her babies inside of this woman, which is where the title comes. Someone you can build a nest in. But <laughs> in Shisha Shen's world, it is an honor to, and like an act of love to put eggs in someone you love. But then the eggs like eat the person alive or something like that. Homily is the woman's name that she's in love with. Homily would make an excellent co-parent, an ideal place to lay Shisha Shen's eggs so that their young can devour Homily from the inside out. But as they grow close, she realizes humans don't think about love that way. Shisha Shen is about to confess that she's a monster. I don't know how Homily didn't realize that with like the bear trap mouth, whatever. But then Homily says that she's only in this area because she heard about this monster that needs to be slain, um, AKA her. And there's some drama going on with Homily's family. It's like an in-law situation where they don't get along. I don't know, this is going to be so fun. I just, it's gonna be fun. The Book of the Most Precious Substance, a novel by Sarah Gran. I did not purchase this for myself. A lovely subscriber, Ashley. MVP, MVP. She gave me this book and another that I'm gonna talk about in a second. And I literally started tearing up when I got this in the mail. Ashley, you are the sponsor of today's video. <laughs> Thank you so much. I love you. This is supposed to be weird. And you know me, I'm a weirdo. A mysterious book promises unlimited power and unrivaled sexual pleasure. If book dealer Lily Albrecht can find it, it's the sale of a lifetime and maybe a ticket to a new life. After an unbearable tragedy, former novelist Lily Albrecht has resigned herself to a dull, sexless life as a rare book dealer. Honestly, that doesn't sound like half a bad life. Until she gets a lead on a book that could turn everything around. The Book of the Most Precious Substance is a 17th century manual on sex magic, rumored to be the most powerful occult book ever written, if it exists at all. And some of the wealthiest people on earth are willing to pay Lily and her partner a fortune to find it if they can. Will Lily fulfill her own desires and join them? Or will the book destroy her as it has so many others? The Book of the Most Precious Substance is an addictive erotic thriller, but the lengths will go to get what we need 
need and want. I just love it when there's an accumulation of genres within a story. This seems weird, it sounds creepy, it sounds sexy. It just sounds like everything I want. Thank you so much, Ashley. I love you. Next, The Death I Gave Him by MX Lee. I got this for a book club. I am a patron of Meg with Books, and this is her April pick for the book club. I am a little nervous about this because I haven't seen great reviews. Actually, I think Kayla read this. I can't shut up about Kayla. She's my bestie, okay? So yeah, I am a little nervous about this, but I think just talking about it with other people is gonna be really fun. This is a, what is it called? Like a locked mystery? I forget what the trope is, but it's where everyone looks really suspicious and one of the person is the killer. It's also sort of futuristic where there's like AI, I think there might be robots, but it's a Hamlet retelling. There's a lot going on. I do like Hamlet. I read it in the 12th grade and it's one that I did so much pouring over and I did so much dissecting of it that I got so much out of it. Like I bled that thing dry. So I am excited to see the connections here, but then again, it's like, I already know what happens in Hamlet. So hopefully this twists things around. That being said, I've never actually read the synopsis. So let's go. Hayden Litchfield's life is ripped apart when he finds his father murdered in their lab and the camera logs erased, okay? The killer can only have been after one thing, the Sisyphus formula the two of them had developed together, which might one day reverse death itself. Hoping to lure the killer into the open, Hayden steals the research. In the process, he uncovers a recording his father made in the days before his death and a dying wish. Avenge me, son. <laughs> with the lab on lockdown, Hayden is trapped with four other people. His uncle Charles, uh, lab technician Gabriel Rasmussen, research intern Felicia Saya, and their head of security, Felicia's father, Paul, one of whom must be the killer. His only sure ally is the lab's resident artificial intelligence, Horatio, who has been his dear friend and companion since its creation. With his world collapsing, Hayden must navigate the building's secret uncover his father's lies and push the boundaries of Santa. Okay, I am so ready. I'm like excited. I do want to reread Hamlet before I read this though because it has been since 12th grade since I picked Hamlet up. That was like 11 years ago. Oh, that's disgusting. Speaking of book clubs, this is the next book, The Hearing Test by Eliza Berry Callahan. It's the next book for Dakota Johnson's new book club. And the only reason I give a fuck about Dakota Johnson's book club is because her first pick was Beautyland which is my favorite book of 2024. I've already locked it down. And so I am just so curious as to what Dakota Johnson's book style is. Like, what are her favorite books? Are we book twins? Could this be the place I go for recommendations? We shall see. This is a somewhat autobiographical story about a woman whose hearing starts declining. When the narrator of the hearing test, an artist in her late 20s, awakens one morning, ew, there's a little spider in my book, ew. Awakens one morning to a deep drone in her right ear. She's diagnosed with sudden deafness, but offered no explanation for its cause. As a specter of total deafness looms, she keeps a record of her year, a score of estrangement and enchantment, of luck and loneliness, of the chance occurrences to which she became attuned. Through a series of fleeting and often humorous encounters with neighbors and ex-lover, doctors, strangers, family members, faraway friends, and with the lives and works of artists, filmmakers, musicians, and philosophers, that was a lot of commas, making me becomes a form of consolation and curiosity, a form of survival. At once a rumination on silence and a novel on seeing. Ooh, The Hearing Test is a work of vitalizing intellect and playfulness that marks the arrival of a major new blah, 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 blah. The book club is called, I think, Tea Time, and I am a part of their broadcast channel on Instagram. During the month of like the book chosen, the author of the book is giving little tidbits of like background information, fun articles that coincide with the book, and it's it's actually kind of fun. I did see that this is autobiographical somewhat. Like this started as a personal account of what was going on in the author's life, like this deafness. And then it became like an essay and then it sort of became a fictionalized version of events. So I'm really curious about this. More so I'm curious as somehow I can connect these books together. Maybe the writing style is somewhat similar and I can hope for Dakota Johnson's next books to be these beautiful devastating novels. We'll see. Every time I do a book haul, I feel like I'm losing my voice. Next, we have The Invocations by Crystal Sutherland. This is another YA paranormal, and I've heard some really good things about this, so my expectations are a little high. Also, how beautiful, how creepy, how beautiful. <gasps> Three girls, one supernatural killer on the loose. Zara, I hope this isn't boring that I'm like reading most of these verbatim. Oh my God, I'm so sorry. Zara Jones believes in magic because the alternative is too painful to consider, that her murdered sister is gone forever and there's nothing she can do about it. 
Rather than grieving and moving on, Zara decides that she will do whatever it takes to claw her sister back from the grave, even trading in the occult. <gasps> Jude Wolf may be the daughter of a billionaire, but she's also undeniably cursed. After a deal with a demon went horribly wrong, her soul has been slowly turning necrotic. What does that mean? Like dead? It's a miserable existence marred by pain, sickness, and monstrous things that taunt her in the night. Ooh, that is intriguing. Now that she's glimpsed what's behind the veil, Jude's desperate to find someone to undo the damage she's done to herself. That's a beautiful line. Enter Emer Bryn. Okay, there's already been like three characters. An orphaned witch with a dark past and a deadly power, aka the solution to both Zara and Jude's problems. So they're gonna get together to solve all their problems. Hopefully they join in sisterhood and become best friends and live happily ever after. That's definitely what's gonna happen. Though Emer lives a hard scrabble life, she gives away her most valuable asset, her invocations, question mark, what is that? To women in hopeless situations who are willing to sacrifice a piece of their soul in exchange for a scrap of power. Zara and Jude are willing, but they first had to find Emer. When Emer's clients start turning up dead all over London, a vital clue leads Zara and Jude right to her. If a serial killer is targeting her clients, Emer wants to know why and to stop them. She strikes a tenuous alliance with Zara and Jude to hunt the killer before they are next. Okay, there's a lot going on. There's a dead sister, necrotic things happening, but like a serial killer? That's a little out of left pocket. Is that the phrase? I need to stop talking. Okay, this is very intriguing. I want some friendship. I want some dark magic. That sounds really cool. I did get the next book in the Thursday Murder Club. I don't know what this is about. I don't want to spoil anything, but like I said earlier, this series is talking about a group of elderly people at a retirement community who solve unsolved crimes. This is one of those series where I don't give a shoot what is happening. I like these characters. I like how it's being told to us. The dialogue is so witty and fast-paced and energizing. It's just delicious and I love it. This is the other book that Ashley so kindly gave to me. This is The Seven Year Slip by Ashley Poston. I have heard amazing things about this book. Like the expectations are pretty high. And again, I love it when genres kind of collide. This is sort of a magical love story. Our main character's name is Clementine. I believe her aunt has passed away and her aunt's apartment is rather special. She moves into her late aunt's apartment and finds a strange man standing in the kitchen. This man somehow exists in the past seven years in the past and she quite literally lives seven years in his future. I have always been very confused about what that means but so intrigued at the same time and based on everyone's rave reviews about this I just know it's gonna be fun, it's going to be sweet, probably talking about grief but also I think this character is really closed herself off to love and I love those stories about like people opening themselves up and like beginning to trust another human being. <gasps> Next, I have The Tainted Cup by Robert Jackson Bennett. I am so excited to read this. I have an itch on my head, but like I don't want to scratch and mess my makeup up. So I'm like just like hitting myself on the head. I think this is historical fantasy. I read the first chapter the other day and it feels that way. It feels kind of like a Victoria Speedwell situation, but this is fantasy. We are getting a duo here. We have a mastermind woman detective. Apparently she's so good that she wears a blindfold and can solve impossible cases without stepping outside the walls of her home. That is some crazy, like, genius shit. She has a new assistant named Dinios Cole, who is magically altered in ways that make him the perfect aid to Anna's brilliance. They are working together. I think they don't get along, or they're just very opposite of each other, and so the, there's, like, gonna be a little tension. They're gonna learn to trust each other. It's gonna be amazing. The case that they're working on in this story is about this body of a man, and there's, like, a tree growing out of his body. Even though this is like a magical place, that kind of magic is not very common. And so everyone is like, what the hell is going on? So of course, our main Anna detective is on the case with her lovely assistant. Dinios, the assistant, is at turn scandalized, perplexed, and infuriated by his new superior, Anna. But as the two close in on a mastermind and Anna makes one startling deduction after the next, he realizes that she is indeed the Empire's greatest detective. This is the part that really got me. He wonders how long he can keep his own secrets safe from her piercing intellect. So I don't know if she knows if he's magically altered. Like he's got some secrets and she's the smartest woman alive. And I, I just need to know what happens. We are nearing the end folks. I have four more books to talk about. Next we have The Writing Retreat, a novel by Julia Bartz. This is a long time coming. I'm pretty sure it was a literally dead book club pick that I never read, but it was one of those things where I've seen it a hundred times. And then suddenly I was like, you know what? I want to buy that because what else do I have to look forward to? This is a story about a group of 
female writers that get to go to this retreat and I think the first one that publishes a book or like writes a book wins a why am I like making shit up when I could just read the back of the book it's a once in a lifetime opportunity attend an exclusive month-long writing retreat at the estate of a feminist horror writer Rosa Vallow when the attendees arrive Rosa drops a bombshell they must write an entire novel from scratch by the month's end the author of the best one will receive a life-changing publishing deal but apparently this lady is kind of erratic there's weird things going on plus Alex's nemesis or her current rival who used to be her best friend is at this retreat and that is the part that I'm really intrigued about this messy sort of friendship maybe more I don't know when one of the writers vanishes during a snowstorm Alex realizes that something very sinister is afoot with the clock running out she must discover the truth or suffer the same fate next up we have trust of the emerald sea by Brandon Sanderson this is gonna be the book Grant and I read after the way of kings we're so excited for it technically Grant bought this for me he bought himself a copy too and like we're in our own little book club it's so cute I've heard absolutely amazing things about this book I don't think I've heard anyone dislike it the only thing I care about is that Brandon Sanderson wrote this for his wife I'm sorry, I need to go cry. The only life Tress has known on her island home in an emerald green ocean has been a simple one, with the simple pleasures of collecting cups brought by sailors from faraway lands and listening to stories told by her friend Charlie. But when his father takes him on a voyage to find a bride and a disaster strikes, Tress must stow away on a ship and seek the sorceress of the deadly midnight sea. Amid the spore oceans, I have heard about that, where pirates abound, can Tress leave her simple life behind and make her own place sailing a sea where a single drop of water can mean in death. My friend did recently read this and he said that it's sort of like the princess bride but with the girl having more agency. I've never re watched that movie. Is it a book? I don't know. See, I don't know. I feel stupid about that. So maybe I'll watch that movie then read this and I think we're just gonna have sweet fairy tale kind of vibes. <sighs> I'm so excited. Next up was another random ass pick from Barnes and Noble. This was a complete cover purchase. It's also rather short. So let's find out what it's about. And I'm gonna give you a prediction of what I'm gonna rate this. Are you ready? This is called Walking Practice by Dolky Min. This cover is just crazy. Oh, it's translated by Victoria Cottle. A shape-shifting alien, oh my God, yes, finds themselves, I'm, I'm like, how did I do this? Okay. A shape-shifting alien finds themselves stranded on Earth and disabled by gravity. To survive, they will need to practice walking. And what better way than to hunt for food? As they discover, humans are delicious. But after an ill-fated encounter, the alien begins to question what they must do to survive and understand why humans also fight to live. <gasps> Five stars? Like, what? I don't know. Maybe it'll be a four star. Because it is really short and that's like a lot. I don't know. I don't know. I've been loving, like, Beauty Lands about an alien. It's my favorite book of the year. Do I need to read this this month? I might have to. <gasps> I just, I like, I know it. I know what's up. I just visually, like I'm connected. Last book we have here is Where Sleeping Girls Lie. This is by Farida Abike Iyamide. I don't know if I said that correctly. I'm so sorry. This is the author of Ace of Spades. I have it sitting over here. Let me just grab it. Okay. This is the author of Ace of Spades. Am I holding this up right? Okay. Let's try again. This is the author of Ace of Spades. I still have not read it. I hear it's fun. It's at a boarding school, dark academia. There's a mystery that they're solving. I think these two are like rivals. I'm not, I'm not supposed to be talking about this book. I'm supposed to be talking about this book. I think I am going to read this one first. First of all, it's on my TBR for April, so it will be read, but also there's just something calling to me. This, this cover is so mysterious and stunning. Our main character, whose name is Said or Sadie, Sade, I don't know. She is a junior in high school and she's transferring to this sort of elite boarding school, which I am a whore for. There's quite a few elite schools in these books I've collected over the last few months. Maybe I should do a reading vlog with them all. Sade has secrets. She's gone through a lot. We don't know what those secrets are. We're gonna unveil them, I'm sure, as we read. But she ends up at this school. Her first night, her roommate goes missing. Um, and so people are already like, this girl's kind of weird because she's new and her roommate goes missing. Like, they're just, they're just being like stupid kids, being mean probably. So our main character, Sade, is sort of investigating what's happening happening along with her roommate's best friend named Baz. And I don't know if there's a romance or maybe I just read into that. I'm hoping there's a little romance in here. Anyway, Sade is the talk of the school for better or worse, but she has caught the eye of this like mean girl group. They call themselves the unholy trinity and they, there's like a leader named Persephone who has really been drawn to Sade. Then 
a student is found dead. So Sage and Baz really need to figure out what's going on to save the lives of everyone. I don't know about this girl group. I'm so intrigued about that. I just love a, a boarding school setting. I think it's so fun and it gets the parents out of any situation. It brings everyone together. Everyone looks suspicious. There's lots of drama. It's just such a good environment for drama and I love it. All right, folks, that is it. Thank you so much for uh, joining me on this. If you're still watching, thank you. Thank you so much. Go ahead and give this video a like if you're feeling, you know, up to it. And also definitely comment below if you've read any of these books. Hype me up or give me some controversy. Tell me that you hated these books. It kind of sometimes works and makes me want to read it faster. I do plan on reading several of these books this month. So if you'd like to stick along and there's going to be one very big reading vlog that I'm reading like three of them in. I'm so excited for coming up soon. So yeah, um, thanks for watching. I already said that. Goodbye.